Hi, in this lesson we are going to talk about routes. In Laravel, routes are the ones who direct your application's traffic, giving you complete control over the responses for whatever requests are made. But let's open up the project that we created in a previous lesson. I'm going to launch my code editor and then we'll navigate to my admin folder and from there I will simply drag and drop my first app folder into the code editor. Now the project is available for me to modify in Sublime Text. Great! Let's return to our routes. In Laravel, all the routes are kept in a central location, a file called routes.php. First, let's open up my first app folder. All the files that we are going to edit are located inside the app folder, so I will open up that folder too. Here we can find the routes.php file that contains our routes. As you can see, the file has only one route at this time, the route that brought us to this homepage of Laravel. Let's say we want to lay the foundation for a category page. We'll need to add a new route that will redirect our categories. We start by entering the keyword route with capital R, followed by two columns. There are many functions that we can use next, but we are going to keep it simple and use one of the most popular one, called get. This corresponds to a browser get requests made to the server. Next, after the methods parentheses, we define our route in single quotes. I'll just enter category here, so this route will take care of the requests that are using the category keyword right after our domain name in the URL. After the codes, I will put a comma and will write our callback function or closure, as it's called in Laravel. At this time, the function will take no parameters, but we'll see later how we can pass parameters along with a route request. I'll just put the curly braces to define my function and you want to make sure that you don't forget to put the semicolon after the end of the route. Now, the original route function is returning a view. But in this lesson we are not going to talk about views yet. That's why we'll simply return a text message from our closure. We do that by typing return followed by the text that we want to return in single quotes and we'll again end the line with a semicolon. Next, I'm going to save the file. This time I'll go to File menu and we'll choose Save, but for now on I will use the Ctrl plus S shortcut in order to save the files. Ok, back to the browser and let's try to access the category page by adding slash category at the end of our URL. And voila! The text category page content is displayed in our browser, which means that our route is working properly. Ok, back to our editor, let's add one more route that will take us to the specific category page. Let's use the SF shortcut that will return the science fiction page content this time. I'll save the file and back in the browser we'll add slash sf at the end of the URL after the category. Nice, science fiction page content is now displayed. That is looking good but all these are static routes so far. Let's try a more dynamic one. Let's write a route that will allow us to add a parameter by the end of the category and to redirect us to a specific page. We'll begin by writing our route keyword, followed by two columns. We'll again use the get function, but this time after our category, we'll put a variable and we'll give it the name parameter. Notice that we put the variable inside the curly bracers. Then we write our closure, but this time we are going to pass a variable to our function, a variable also called parameter, as the one used in the route, this time with the dollar sign before it, as this is a PHP variable. 
Then, in our return statement, we include this variable and add some more text to it. Something like page content. I save the file and will go back in the browser to test the new route. So, after category, I can insert any variable and this will be passed as a parameter variable to our route. Let's first try with musical. As you can see, the page is now displaying musical page content. Let's try another one, let's say thriller. The page content is changed accordingly. Back to our editor, let's see how we can write this return line in a more elegant way by removing the concatenating dot. We delete our parameter and move it inside the codes, this time surrounding it by curly braces and putting the dollar sign before it. It looks good, it could work, let's give it a try. Let's save the file and refresh the page and uh, the reason that we receive the actual variable name instead of its value, it's you guess it, because we need to use double quotes when we want to display a variable value. So I'll just simply replace the single quotes with double quotes. We'll save the file and let's give it one more try. By refreshing the page, now we can see that the variable's value is passed this time instead of its name. Just to make sure, let's replace Thriller with something more romantic and see if the page content is changing. And indeed is changing. Let's recap how a route is written in the routes.php file. We start with the keyword route with capital R. This is an actual Laravel class which deals with the routing or redirecting system. Then we call the static function, which in our case was get. A static function, also called a class function, does not require any instance of an object to exist. That's why you use the two columns when calling the function. Optionally, we can pass one or more parameters to the route that we specified and we finish the call with a callback function, also known as closure in Laravel, which can also take none, one or more parameters depending on how we declared our route. So in this lesson we discussed about how the pages are routed in Laravel. We created our own custom routes and we finished by adding a parameter to it. Next, we learned that we can display variables in our files by surrounding them in curly bracers and using double quotes instead of single quotes. In the next lesson, we'll discuss about views, so see you soon.